Jesse Livermore was the most successful stock trader on Wall Street in the early 20th century. He correctly predicted the stock market crash in 1907, making him make $3 million in a single day. In 1929, Livermore achieved a profit of $100 million by shorting numerous stocks. That year, he was held responsible for the collapse of the stock market, which cemented his reputation as the boy plunger. So what advice and lessons can we learn from Jesse Livermore? Without further ado, let's get started. 1. There is never anything novel or exciting that takes place in investing in securities and commodities. During the past 100 years, there has been a clear shift in the nature of trading due to technological developments and other factors. However, what Jesse is trying to express here is that the act of buying and selling has been around for many years. Since the beginning, we have always engaged in trading, speculating, gambling and investing. And since the beginning of trading, the essential aspects of trading psychology and edge, as well as the emotional experiences and reactions of traders, have not fundamentally altered. 2. Making money regularly by trading daily or weekly throughout the year is impossible. This emphasizes the significance of having patience and being selective. It is acceptable at times to take no action. Even the most successful intraday traders who earn a living off trading the markets daily likely have days without high-quality trading chances. Your level of success as a trader is directly proportional to your ability to maintain the self-discipline required to wait for your edge to become apparent before taking any risks. 3. You shouldn't put too much stock in your own opinion or judgment until the behavior of the market itself corroborates what you think. Price action is what matters most. You shouldn't trade based on your instincts. You shouldn't pay attention to every market analyst and you shouldn't let the judgments of other traders sway you. Create a trading strategy, test it through its paces, and then work up the courage and self-control to back it up with as much faith as possible. Instead of letting your fear and greed direct your actions, listen to what the markets say. 4. Contrary to popular belief, the market is never wrong. You are required to accept complete responsibility for the outcomes of your trading. There is no room for explanations. It is entirely your responsibility if any money is lost. Price action can never give a wrong reading. It doesn't matter if you were stop hunted, got caught in a gap move, were burned by a flash crash, were squeezed by market manipulators, or forgot to put your stop loss in. You are to blame for everything that went wrong. If you're willing to acknowledge that the markets can never be wrong and that every one of your positive or negative results is the consequence of your own decision-making and trading plan, then and only then do you have the right mentality to be successful as a trader. 5. The money made in trading is made right from the beginning of a process. It is not prudent to hang on to investments performing poorly, and timing is critical in determining the nature of trading opportunities. A good number of traders state that their most successful trades were profitable from the very beginning. They were spared the anguish of suffering for many hours, days, or months. They had a good understanding of the market conditions, were able to time the market effectively, and optimize the size of their positions as much as they could. When deciding how to proceed with your trade, this does not mean that you should quickly exit any trade that goes into the red, as a scalper may do. Instead, it means that you should be aware of how long it takes for your setups to play out and gauge the overall health of the price action based on that. 6. It is not a good idea to try and understand all the factors that influence price changes. Among all the pieces of advice that we have seen from Jesse, this one might be everyone's favorite. We are curious beings. We take pleasure in figuring out why things are the way they are. We are preoccupied with unraveling the mysteries of cause and effect. However, keeping certain things a mystery is often to one's advantage in trading. To profit from the markets, it is not necessary to understand what causes those swings. When many traders first start trading, they fall into the trap of examining every possible element that could affect the values of the assets they are trading. However, it does not take long to understand that there are so many variables affecting the outcome of the situation and it would be hard to give a single explanation for everything. As a result, you're only encouraged to rely on one instrument at this point. 7. One should never let speculative bets eat into their investments. 
you should only trade the timeframes that you had originally intended to trade. If you open a trade with the intention of intraday or swing trading, you should continue to treat it in that matter. You shouldn't give in to greed and switch your strategy in the middle of a trade just because you suddenly feel like you understand the market better. Because of inconsistencies in their execution, many traders cannot generate regular returns from the markets. First, carefully select your portfolio and timeframes, then put them to the rest. And finally, commit to using them. 8. The amount of money lost due to active investment is negligible compared to the enormous quantities of money that so-called passive investors lose. In this context, we assume Jesse was referring to the buy and hold technique, which many money managers and value investors utilize. Although this is a profitable technique during rising markets, investors frequently see their portfolios wipe out during market downturns and bad markets. Jesse is making the point that the losses sustained by an active trader can be negligible compared to those sustained by an investor who takes a hands-off approach. Before we continue, remember, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get all the latest and greatest on financial planning and budgeting straight to your feed. Plus, I've got these fantastic monthly budget trackers. You can find the link in the description below. So go ahead, smash that subscribe button and check out those trackers your finances and future self will be absolutely thrilled. 9. You should never invest in a stock just because its price has dropped significantly from its previous peak. Do not attempt to catch a falling knife. Consider Bitcoin, the dot-com bubble, and other examples. If the price of an asset is plummeting precipitously at the peak of a parabolic trend, there is probably a sound economic explanation for the move. There is a significant distinction between purchasing a dip or retreat and placing one's foot in front of a freight train while making an investment decision. When the conditions are just right, buying into capitulation as a contrarian trading setup can perform wonderfully. However, for the average trader, doing so is foolish and risky because of the inherent risk. 10. You should never sell a stock only because you think its price is too high. You should never go short against strong momentum and avoid taking winnings too quickly merely because you believe your trade has reached its maximum potential for earnings. Wait until there is a reason to sell based on the rules of your trading plan. A brief stretch of extraordinarily high valuations is not a sufficient basis to consider selling an asset. In point of fact, this is frequently the point that marks the start of a parabolic move even higher. 11. After a stock has a normal pullback that makes a new high on its movement, buy it. We believe that Jesse referred to buying pullbacks and breakouts into new highs in a trending market when he made this statement. The term normal can be interpreted in several different ways and we have no idea what Jesse intended by it. On the other hand, buying on price breakouts is a strategy that works quite well during bull markets. Suppose you try to select a bottom during the retracement in that case, your chances of making a profit are considerably lower than if you purchase late into strength instead of early into pullbacks. 12. Never average losses This is another time-tested piece of advice for good reason. When Paul Tudor Jones was on his way to becoming a trading star, he brazenly tacked his inscription to the wall above his trading station. In retrospect, it is clear that adding to lost positions was a disciplinary issue for him at the time, and he believed it was essential to eradicate this practice from his trading. If he and Jesse consider it significant, then you should do the same. When a trade goes against you, it signifies that you were wrong about it, which is the definition of losing. Either your time is off or your directional bias is off, and because of this, we make use of stop losses. It should come as no surprise that the practice of not using a stop loss is a primary contributor to the failure of many traders. 13. Big movements need time to grow. Along the same lines as number six, let your wins run. Be patient. The development of significant price movements takes time. While this development is taking place, there is a high risk that you may succumb to the temptation of viewing each tick as a potential threat, particularly as your profit increases. But be patient. Be careful to use a reliable trailing stop approach with which you are familiar and comfortable. Avoid giving away excessive open gains, but ensure your huge winnings aren't stifled. That's all from this video. 
What did we miss or what point intrigued you the most? Comment down below. See you in the next one. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.